Praise the Lord. Eke, hallelujah. Agege people, I cannot tell you, I said, praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Baba, we do bless your name. We know you are a mighty God. Your power will never fail. As we come tonight, we are asking you to release your power. You release the anointing. You release your authority. And you bless all your people in Jesus' name. We pray you will break every yoke. You'll destroy the works of the devil. You'll set your people free. We pray, Lord, both old and young, men and women, everyone will experience the power of God tonight. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Thank you. God bless you. You can sit down. We thank God for bringing us together tonight. But I want to remind you that this is revival. It's not just a crusade for sinners. If you're a member of a Bible-believing church, you're born again already. The crusade or the revival is still for you. You are a leader in the church. You are a pastor. You are a preacher. You are a bishop. You are an archbishop. You are an evangelist. And here you are tonight. It's not just that I came to see what God is doing for other people. You are here because God wants to revive you. Revival of power. Revival of authority. Revival of something unforgettable in your life. And so I don't want you to sit back and just say it's a crusade evening for the rest of the people. Walk us there, the Lord will touch you. Pastors, preachers there, the Lord will touch you. Evangelists and bishops there, the Lord will touch you. Members of the church, the Lord will touch you. Invitees, those who are invited. And you have been told that something is happening. Something wonderful. Something unforgettable. It's going to happen to you tonight in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 1. Mark chapter 1, verse 1. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The beginning of glad tidings, something coming to you new, something coming to you from heaven, from the Lord Jesus Christ, about Jesus, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophets, behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall, which shall prepare thy way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare, prepare ye the way of the Lord, and make his path straight. It's talking about what Christ came to do here on earth. And Mark reports it in a special way. He reports it in a peculiar way. And he wants you to understand that when you come in the presence of Christ, you're coming in the presence of the great king. And there's good news coming from that king. Power coming from that king. Authority coming from that king. Anointing that breaks every year coming from that king. In verse 7 he says, and preach, saying, There cometh one mightier than I after me. The last of whose shoes I'm not worthy to stoop down and unloose. He's saying, If you think I'm mighty, there's one mightier coming. 
If you think I'm great, there's somebody greater coming. If you think I'm holy, there's somebody holier coming. It's talking about Jesus Christ. The one higher than angels. Higher than the prophets. Higher than the priests. Higher than the kings of the earth. Mightier, more powerful than anybody that ever lived on the face of the earth. He says, I'm talking about Jesus. I'm talking about the Son of God. The one that has power. Greater than every other power. Might greater than every other person was trying. He says, I'm talking about Jesus Christ. And I bring the gospel, the good news. And the good news will become yours tonight in Jesus' name. In verse 11 he says, And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. The father now God, the father is speaking from heaven. He's saying, That is my beloved son. He is like no other that ever came. Have you heard about Moses? That brought water out of the rock? This one is greater. Have you heard about Moses? That made all the chariots of Egypt to sink in the Red Sea? This one is greater. Have you heard about Elijah? That brought fire from heaven? This one is greater. Have you heard about angels? That came from heaven? And when they let miracles happen, this one is greater. This is my beloved son. I have sent him to you to save your soul, to heal your body, to deliver you from oppression, and to set you free. Look at verse 27. In verse 27, we're talking about this Jesus. It says, and they were all amazed. They were all surprised. It was like, we never saw anything like this before. Jesus comes to your life tonight. What you have never seen, you will see. I thought Agege will say, Amen. And it says, and they were all amazed. In so much that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority, he commanded he even evil spirits, some clean spirits, and they do obey him. You know, the Father God in heaven has spoken about him. John had spoken about him. All the people now they spoke about him. They said, What power is this? What authority is this? What great manifestation is this? One word. Evil spirits came out. One word. Your sickness will be healed. One word. Your mountains are taken away. One word. Your soul is saved. One word. Translation comes to your life. It tells us in verse 34. And he healed many. And he healed many. Many that were sick. Of diverse diseases. And he cast out many devils. And he cast out many devils. Who is going to be a partaker of the miracle tonight? Power tonight. You know, if you are there not as a spectator, if you are not there, if you are there not just as somebody looking at other people, and you say, I am here for something. Somebody there, I am here for something. He's going to walk miracles in many lives tonight. He's going to touch many lives tonight. And while you are there, and he sends the word of power and authority in your life, something will happen in your life right there. That person standing there, something will happen. That something sitting down, something will happen. Power will break every yoke in your life tonight. 
That's why I'm talking to you tonight on experiencing the power of the king. Experiencing the power of the king. You know, my brother, my sister, anytime we just say Jesus, we don't know who we are talking about. Anytime we're talking about Jesus, we mention his name in prayer. We say, in Jesus' name. We mention his name in preaching. Can I talk to you about Jesus? We talk to people about Jesus on the phone. When we mention that name, we don't know what we're talking about. We're talking about the King. We're talking about the King of glory. Jesus Christ is the King of glory. When He enters your life, when you enter His kingdom, the glory of heaven will come your way. He is the King of all the earth. Think about the King of your community. Think about the King of your tribe. Think about the King of the whole nation. But it's the King of all the earth. It's the King of all power. Kings of authority. Kings of power. But this King we're talking about is the King that has all power. All power in heaven. All power on earth. You put everything together. All the powers that angels can boast about. All the powers that men and women can boast about. All the powers that anybody on earth, everybody on earth, put everything together. More than that, he has the power over all the earth. Number one, I said, is the king of glory. Psalm 24. In Psalm 24, I'm reading here from verse 7. Lift up your head, so ye gates. Be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. It's talking about that coming king. If you look at Psalm 22, it talks about him as a shepherd. That's the good shepherd that gave his life for the sheep. If you look at chapter 23, the Lord is my shepherd. He's still talking about him. That's the, that's the great shepherd that gave that is taking care of his people. When you come to Psalm 24, it's talking about the God of glory. The King of glory. is a glorious shepherd. And he says in verse 8, who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Every battle of your life tonight, it will solve. Every problem of your life tonight, it will take away. Open the gates and let the King of glory come in. In verse 9, lift up your heads, so ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. And in verse 10 he says, Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. That King of glory is coming to your life today. You see, when you're told, if you want to have Jesus as your Savior, where are you? Raise up your hand. We're telling you, the King is calling you. And the King wants to enter into your life with all the power of the King, authority of the King, and the might of the King. And when you have Him, I'm telling you, the greatest thing has happened in your life. In Psalm 47 verse 7 Verse 47 verse 7 It says for God is the king of all the earth For God is the king of all the earth And then the almighty God has given all authority unto Christ God the creator God the father of all eternity 
He called his only begotten son. I'm the king of all the earth. I transferred that to you. And that's why now Jesus Christ is the king of all the earth. And is the king of all power. That's why he said all power in heaven on earth is given unto me. And when he comes to your life tonight, weakness will vanish away. Sickness will vanish away. Infirmity will vanish away. Everything the devil has done in your life, he'll pack everything and sweep everything away from your life. Hebrews chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 2. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 2. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all. And then he says, false, being by interpretation the king of righteousness. And after that also the king of Salem, which is the king of peace. Look at verse 3, it says, without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days, nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, he abideth a priest forever continually. Is the king of righteousness. You know, there are many people that are searching for righteousness. They look for righteousness in River Jordan. They look for righteousness in uh, River Niger. They look for righteousness in River Benue. They think, if I wash with that water, it, they, they say, that water will make me righteous. There's no righteousness there. The king of righteousness, he invites you and he says, Come. And when that king of righteousness takes over your life, unrighteousness will vanish away, guilt will vanish away, all your defilement will vanish away. He is the king of righteousness, he is the king of peace. Many people don't have peace in their hearts. They don't have peace in their family. They don't have peace in their community. But Jesus Christ, the King of glory, Jesus Christ, the King of all the earth, Jesus Christ, the King of all power, Jesus Christ, the King of righteousness, He is the King of peace. You saw it there in chapter 7 verse 2 of Hebrews. And he said, if you want this, the peace of God in your soul, the peace of God in your mind, the peace of God in your family, Jesus is the Prince of Peace, the King of Peace. Revelation chapter 15. I'm looking at verse 3. Revelation chapter 15. And we're reading here from verse 3. It says in verse 3, And they sang the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty, just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. The Father has committed all that into His hand. The Father, the Creator, is the one that is the King of all the saints. Saints past, saints present, saints future, saints in eternity. But Jesus said, everything that belongs to the Father belongs to me. He has committed everything to my hand. He is the king of the saints. And I'm talking about his power tonight. I'm talking about the one that is what is power. His touch is power. His presence is power. His name is power. His word, everything he does is power. And you are going to be connected tonight. 
Everybody shout connection. Everybody shout connection. Everybody let me agege people connection. You are connected tonight to the king of glory. Connected tonight to the king of all the earth. Connected tonight to the king of all power. Connected tonight to the king of righteousness. Connected tonight to the king of peace. To the king of saints. Is the king of great inheritance. Is the king of great inheritance. I'm looking at some two. I'm reading from verse 6. I'm looking at some two. I'm reading from verse 6. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. There's a father talking about the son. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son with a capital S. Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Ask of me. Ask of me. Ask of me. And I will give thee the kingdom for thine inheritance. And the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. It's the king of great inheritance. And he wants you to become part of that inheritance tonight. That he will say, you are mine. You belong to me. And everything he has as the king of kings and the lord of lords. Everything will belong to you as well. Tonight we're looking at experiencing the power of the king. Experiencing the power of the king. Anybody there going to have the connection? What do you say there? What is the man there? What is the woman there? You are going to have connection tonight. Uh -huh. If you are not self-satisfied, if you are not saying, I'm all right, if you say, Jesus the King has something that I will get tonight, that power will turn your life around. That power will break every yoke in your life. Tonight is going to be a new day in your life. I said tonight is going to be a new day in your life. Let me talk about myself. Today, I said today, I said today will be a great day in my life. In my life. I'm going to get a new connection. Preacher, are you there? I'm going to get a new connection. Bishop, are you there? I'm going to get a new connection. Lay reader, are you there? I'm going to get a new connection. A Christian walker in a church, I'm going to get a new connection. A newcomer, you came here today, praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Power from heaven. The power of the King. The power from glory. The power that is greater than all the powers of the earth. Connection. Connection. Connection is coming upon your life in Jesus' name. Your blind eyes will open. Your limb legs will rise up and walk. Hunchback will vanish away. Tumor will vanish away. Impossibility will be possible. That mountain in your life I command, come out in Jesus' name. Experiencing the power of the King. There are three things we need to talk about. Number one, preparation for the arrival of the king he's coming he's coming he's coming your way i said he's coming your way preparation for the arrival of the king number two the privilege of adoption by the king there are many kings that may be merciful many kings that may make provision for people this king we're talking about, he invites you and he adopts you into his family. 
the privilege of adoption by the king. Number three, the power and the authority of the king. The power and the authority of the king. Number one. Tell me, number one. Tell me, number one. Shout it out, number one. Preparation for the arrival of the king. Are you getting ready? I said, are you getting ready? Somebody there, are you getting ready? The king is coming. The king is coming. The arrival of the king. Preparation for the arrival of the king. Uh, look at Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. I'm looking at verse 3. The voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare ye. Prepare ye. Prepare ye. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Make his path straight. Then you find that important word. That you find that indispensable word. If you are going to receive the key, you will not just sit back and say, I am so and so. You will not just sit back and say, I have read the Bible before. You will not just sit back and say, I'm a religious man. He says, get ready. Prepare. The king is coming. The king of glory is coming. The king of power is coming. The king is coming to your house. I said the king is coming to your house. You prepare. How do you prepare? So for Samuel chapter 7. For Samuel chapter 7. And I'm reading here from verse 3. Prepare. Prepare. Everybody shout prepare. In 1 Samuel chapter 7 verse 3. And Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel. And Samuel spake to all the house of Israel. Saying, if ye do return unto the Lord with all your heart. Then put away the strange gods. And Ashtoreth from among you. And prepare. And prepare. And prepare your hearts unto the Lord. And serve him only. And he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. It says, if you want to come. If you want to make way for the king. You want to prepare your heart. Because he said, I'm standing at the door. And then I'm knocking. If anyone hears my voice and he opens the door, I will come into him. I will sup with him and fellowship with him. It says that preparation will make you to abandon every idol. The idol of twins. The idol of making money. The idol of iron. The idol of wood. The idol of candle. The idol of incense. The idol of worshipping tradition. It says, if you really want the king, Calvary has cancelled all the candles. Calvary has cancelled all the incense. Calvary has cancelled all the worship of tradition. Calvary has cancelled all the idols. All the idols of twins. Every kind of idol. And he says you are preparing your heart. You will abandon every idol. Bye bye idol. I'm going to the king. Bye bye evil. I'm going to the king. Bye bye tradition. I'm going to the king. And as you do that. You prepare your heart. You prepare your mind. You say Lord I'm ready. The king will come to you today. I said, the king will come to you today. Where are you there? I said, where are you there? God bless you. You see, many of you, you say, I'm born again. Ah, but you know the idol. If there is a football game, 
And then there is a kind of revival service. If it is at the same time, uh, I cannot miss that football game. That's an, that's an idol. Anything you exalt above the name of God, you exalt above the worship of God. That's an idol right there. Some people, it's the idol of gambling. All the money you get. I want to make money. I want to make money. The love of money is the root of all evil. And then you gamble. Because you are looking to, you want to reap where you have not sowed. That's the idol. But the king is coming. You want to get connected to the king. And the Lord is saying, if you will abandon your idol, you will abandon your gambling. Marijuana. All those evil things to put in. Eat your body. So you can be strong. And be like a man. So you can fight. So you can do evil. That's your idol right there. And the Lord is saying, the king is coming, clear the way. The king is coming, prepare your heart. The king is coming, sweep all those things away. Everything that is not according to the word of God. The king wants to come into your life. And he will come. I said he will come. I get the you there. I said they will come. And then you will clear the way. You say you are born again. And then there are things in your life. Competing with the love of God in your heart. It appears you cannot live up that. You cannot give up that thing. You cannot abandon that thing. You serve your own opinion more than you serve God. Your own ideas more than you serve God. I like this, I like this. You serve that more than you serve God. The king is not preeminent in your life. The king is not prominent in your life. Is that opinion, is that idea that is prominent in your life? And you say, today I prepare the way. Lift up your heads, O gates. And let the king of glory come in. Who is this God of glory? It's the Lord God in heaven. It's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And he says, prepare. 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 We're looking at Job chapter 11. Job chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 13. If thou prepare thine heart and stretch out thine hands toward him. He said, you need to prepare your heart. You see, he's telling us over and over. Verse 14, if iniquity be in thine hand, if iniquity be in thine hand, how can iniquity be in thy hand? When you shed blood with your hand, iniquity in your hand. You commit abortion, iniquity in your hand. You steal with your hand, iniquity in your hand. You put leaves and other things together to make juju, iniquity with your hand in your hand. You are violent and you are beating people and killing people, iniquity in your hand. It says, if iniquity be in your hand, when you commit adultery, you hold another person's wife with your hand, iniquity in your hand. When you are a drunkard and you are taking that thing with your hand, iniquity in your hand. It says, if iniquity be in your hand, it says, put it far away. Let not wickedness dwell in the tabernacle. But then thou shalt lift up thy face without spot. Yea, thou shalt be steadfast, and thou shalt not fear. If you prepare yourself, and you allow the king to come in, because thou shalt forget thy misery, your sorrow will pass away. I get the people, your sorrow will pass away. Your suffering will pass away. 
The King is coming. The King of glory. The King is coming. The King of all the earth. The King is coming. The King of all power. The King is coming. The King of righteousness. The King is coming. Is the King of peace. The King is coming. Is the King of saints. The King is coming. Is the King of great inheritance. And he says, prepare. 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 All that iniquity. All that sin. You throw them away. If you do that. Tonight, tonight. Today, today. Something definite. Something miraculous. Something supernatural. I see you there. It's coming your way there. I said it's coming your way there. You come out clear and clean. Come out of that dirty water. Come out of that dirty lifestyle. Come out of that evil worship. And say, Lord, I come. I prepare my heart. I prepare the way that the king will come in. Number two. The privilege of adoption by the king. The privilege of adoption by the king. I'm looking at Mark chapter 1. In Mark chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 16. Mark chapter 1, we're looking at verse 16. Many people don't understand. They don't know what happens. When you say, I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. They don't know the deep meaning of that. The world behind me. And the cross before me. The cross before me. The world behind me. They don't know the deep meaning of that. I have decided I will follow Jesus till the end. Though all oppose me, still I will follow. They don't understand. I will follow. I will follow. I will follow. Mark chapter 1. I'm reading here from verse 16. Now as they walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea. For they were fishers. And Jesus said unto them, Come after me. Something was going to happen. Come after me. Their destiny was going to change. Come after me. The past was to be forgiven. Come after me. A new life was to start. Come after me. Adoption into the family of God was to happen now. Many people don't understand. You want to follow Jesus? Come. Come. The thing is just simple. But when you take that step, heaven will be looking at you. When you take that step, heaven will put down your name. When you take that step, your name will enter into the book of life immediately. When you take that step, you become a member of the family of the king. Adopted into the family. Adopted into the family. There are some people, they don't understand. I'm born again. I'm born again. And I tell them, tell me what happens when you are born again. And I raise up my hand. And then I walk to the front. And somebody there prayed for us. I said, after that, what happened? I said, eh, I come to church. I'm telling you something tonight. When you give your life to Jesus Christ, angels will rejoice because of you. Satan will cry because of you. Evil spirits will cry because of you. Evil powers will put their hand in the mouth. They will say they will regret. Because something great will happen to you tonight. I'm looking for somebody. I said I'm looking for somebody that is going to have that connection tonight. What do you see there? I said what do you see there? Connection. Connection. You will not go back home the same. When you come to Christ, you are adopted into the family of God. Come ye after me. And I will make you to become fishers of men. And straightway, and straightway, and straightway, 
It says, they, fought, they pursued their nets and followed him. Have you noticed two words there? Number one, pursued. Number two, followed. You cannot just follow. You must leave the past behind you. You must burn the bridge behind you. You cannot be connected to the king. If you are still chained to Satan, you are still connected with evil spirits. You are still connected with witchcraft. You are connected with familiar spirits. You break that one. You forsake that one. You cannot be in the congregation of the saints. Why you are still connected with parts of darkness? Connected with evil spirits. Connected with sin. Connected with your gang of criminals. You break that one. You destroy that one. You destroy that breach. You say, I've decided. I will follow Jesus. Because I forsake my past. If you've been coming to church. I'm following Christ. I'm following Christ. You didn't forsake your old girlfriend. You didn't forsake the beer parlor. You didn't forsake the dancing hall. You didn't forsake the herbalist. You did not forsake the evil spirit. You did not forsake the witchcraft. Uh -uh, you are not following. They forsook. They forsook. You'll forsake your stealing. You'll forsake your gambling. You'll forsake your lying. You will forsake that adultery. You'll forsake that fornication. They forsook and they followed. What happened after that? What happened after that? Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. Are you there? Agege, I said, are you there? Agege, I said, are you there? Mark chapter 10, open your Bible. And I'm reading from verse 28. Mark chapter 10, verse 28. Look at it, what it says. Peter began to say to him, Lo, we have led, we are forsaken all. And we have followed thee. We have led. You must leave something. Don't tell me you are following Christ. If you have not left something, your net, you will forsake that. The bottle, you will forsake that. The matches, you will forsake that. That evil thing in your hand, the talisman, you will forsake that. And the alcohol, you will forsake that. You must leave something to follow Christ. There's nobody who is so clean. Nobody is so pure that I'm just following Christ. I didn't have to forsake anything. No, all I've seen have come short of the glory of God. All the sins of your life, all the deception in your mouth, you leave all and you follow. What happens then? I said, What happens then? Because Peter said, Look, we have left all, we have forsaken all, and we have followed thee. And Jesus answered and said in verse 29, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that has left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospel's sake. But he shall receive an hundredfold. He shall receive an hundredfold now in this life. In this time. Houses, brethren, sisters, mothers, children, lands with persecution. And in the world to come, eternal life. Because you are adopted into the family of God. You are adopted into a family of the king. Uh, look at Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 15. Adoption. 
the privilege of adoption into the family of the king. The privilege of adoption by the king. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 15. It tells us, ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Fear has gone. The fear of judgment is gone. The fear of death is gone. The fear of evil is gone. The fear of Satan is gone. And the fear of evil people, all that is gone. But ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. And the spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children then heirs, heirs of God, joint here with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Adoption. You come into the family of God and your destiny changes completely. Number one, the arrival of the king. Number two, adoption by the king. Number three, the authority of the king. The power and the authority of the king. This king has power. Power to forgive. This king has power. Power to save. This king has power. Power to deliver. This king has power. Power to bind the devil from your life. This king has power. Power to set you free and to make you go in peace. Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. Power. Connection with power. Power. Glory. Anointing. The breaking of yoke. Setting free. The captive. Somebody there is free tonight. I said somebody there is free tonight. Miracle will come your way. I cannot hear again a say amen. In Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. I'm reading here from verse 23. Mark chapter 1 verse 23. And there was in the in their synagogue, there a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out. Saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee? Thou Jesus of Nazareth, and thou come to destroy us, I know who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, come out of him. And when the evil spirit had turned him and cried with a loud voice, it came out of him. The power and the authority of the king. That power is coming your way tonight. It will knock the hand of the devil out of your life. It will destroy every work of the devil out of your life. Look at verse 32. And at evening when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased. And them that were possessed with devils. And all the city was gathered together at the door. Verse 34. This is going to happen to you. Verse 34. This is what you'll go home with. Verse 34. This one was written concerning you. Verse 34. Fulfillment in your life today. Manifestation in your life today. Performance in your life today. Before I read verse 34, where is the person marked down for verse 34? Verse 34 is mine. Verse 34 is mine. It's my privilege. It's my property. It's the performance in my life. Where is the person I'm talking about? It's coming your way. Verse 34. And he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases. 
And he cast out many devils. And he suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him. The power has come your way tonight. Mark chapter 2 verse 10. Mark chapter 2 verse 10. But that she may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. It says to the sick of the palsy. I say unto thee, arise and take up thy bed and go thy way into thine house. And immediately. Somebody there immediately. Shout immediately. Shout immediately. When will your blind eyes open? Tell me immediately. When will the lame rise up and walk? Tell me immediately. When will that touchback disappear? Tell me immediately. When will that goiter disappear? Tell me immediately. When will that cancer be healed? Tell me immediately. When will your sin be forgiven? Shout it out immediately. When will your soul be saved? Shout it out immediately. And immediately he arose. And immediately he arose. And took up the bed. And went forth before them all. In so much that they were all amazed. In so much they were all amazed. And they glorified God saying. We never saw it on this passion. We never saw it on this passion. The time has come for you. I said the time has come for you. I said the time has come for you. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Tonight is my night. Mark chapter 7. I'm reading verse 37. Mark chapter 7 verse 37. And they were beyond measure astonished. They were beyond measure surprised. They were beyond measure amazed. Saying, he has done all things well. He has done all things well. He cleanses the leper. He has done all things well. He opens the eyes of the blind. He has done all things well. He makes the deaf to hear. He has done all things well. He makes the panity to jump out of the wheelchair. He has done all things well. His name is Jesus. He's the King of glory. His name is Jesus. He's the King of all the earth. His name is Jesus. He's the King of all power. His name is Jesus. He's the King of righteousness. His name is Jesus. He's the King of peace. His name is Jesus. He's the King of saints. His name is Jesus. He's the King with great inheritance. His name is Jesus. He is the king of my life. He is the king of my life. He is the king of my life. What are you there? He is the king of my life. What are you there? I have no other king. I have no other director. I have no other manager. I have no other person. He is my king. He is my savior. He is my lord. His name is Jesus. Prepare the way. Prepare the way. A connection is coming right now. A connection is coming right now. Connection. 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 You prepare the way. And then you'll be a partaker. A partaker of the privilege of adoption. Adoption by the king. And then the power and the authority. The power and the authority is coming your way. I said it's coming your way. I said it's coming your way. I'm looking for the person I'm talking about. I'm looking for the person I'm talking about. I'm looking for the person that will have the privilege of adoption. Privilege of adoption. I'm looking for the person that will connect. That will connect with the power and the authority of the king. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. A great moment in your life. A great moment in your life. The king is coming. Open the gate. The king is coming. Open the door. It's coming right now. It's coming right now. They don't tell me, don't tell me. I've been going to church. Forget about that one. Open the gate and let the king of glory come in. Open the gate and let the king of glory come in. Who is this king of glory? It's Jesus Christ. 
the king of all power. Who is this king of glory? It's Jesus Christ, the king of our salvation. Who is this king of glory? It's Jesus Christ, the one that forgives our sin. Open the door now. Open the door now. Open the door now. The door of your heart. Burn the bridge behind you. Forsake what's behind you. And say, I follow Jesus. I follow Jesus. It's bowed and eyes closed. If you're coming to Jesus tonight, if it's going to be your Savior tonight, raise up that hand. Raise it up to heaven. Let heaven see that hand. Let the angel see that hand. Let the Almighty God see that hand. Lord, I come. Lord, I come. Lord, I come. Raise up that hand. If you're raising that hand to heaven, and you're saying, Jesus, look at me here. Jesus, look at me here. I want the King of Glory to come into my heart. You're raising up your hands. You will stand up. You will stand up. Lord Jesus, I come. Are you standing up because you want Jesus to be the King of Glory in your life? The King of Power in your life? The King of Salvation in your life? The King of Righteousness in your life? Take his step. Come out right here. Come out right here. Lord Jesus, I come. Lord Jesus, I come. King of glory. King of glory, I come. What are you? Come out. Come out. Lord, I come. Lord, I come. Lord, I come. I leave all my sins behind me. Drunkenness behind. Drunkenness I leave behind. All the juju I leave behind. All those evil things I leave behind. All the idols I leave behind. All those candles I leave behind. All that incense I leave behind. All that tradition I leave behind. Concubine, concubine, concubine. I leave all the concubines behind. I leave all the adultery behind. I leave all the fornication behind. Lord Jesus, I come. Lord Jesus, I come. Be the king of my life. Keep on coming, keep on coming. You tell the Lord, I so come. I so come. I so come. You close your eyes there. Look at Jesus alone. Don't look at me. Don't look at your neighbors. Don't look sideways. Close your eyes and see Jesus. Close your eyes and see Jesus. And say, Jesus, be my Savior. Jesus, be my Lord. Jesus, forgive my sin. Change my life. Change my life. Keep on coming. Keep on coming. Keep on coming. Come to the King. Come to the King. The King of glory. Come to the King. The King of power. Come to the King. The King of righteousness. Come to the King. It's the King of peace. Come to the King. He will forgive your sin. He will adopt you to the family. You will become a child of God. You will become a child of God. You will cry, Abba Father. It's waiting for you. What are you? What are you? You want to miss the opportunity. Or being a child of God, an opportunity, or becoming a member of the body of Christ. Come on, come on, come in right now. Come in right now. Lord, I come. Lord, I come. All the gang, you leave that behind. Criminals, leave that behind. All the crime, leave that behind. All that evil thing, leave that behind. Every evil thing, leave that behind. I've been going to church, forget about that. I've been doing this and doing that. Forget about that. Tell the Lord I'm a sinner. Tell the Lord I'm wicked. Tell the Lord I'm dirty. Tell the Lord I'm defiled. Tell the Lord I come. I come for forgiveness. I come for a new life. I come for a change of life. You are part of the back. Keep coming. Keep coming. The king is waiting for you. He wants to make you part of his family. He wants to make you part of his family. And you're saying, Lord, I come. And I will never go back again. Never go back anymore. Never, never, never go back. Never go back. I come. I come. I come. I come. King of glory. I open the gate. I open the gate. I open the gate. Come in. Come into my heart. Come in today. Come in to stay. I will never leave you. And I know you will never leave me. Forsake your sin. Forsake your sin. 
forsake your sin and then say, Lord, I believe you died for me on the cross of Calvary. Lord, I believe you died for me on the cross of Calvary. Now I'm saved. My sins are forgiven. My life has changed. I am adopted into the family of God. Come. And then remain with the Lord. Remain with the Lord. You will not go back to those idols anymore. You will not go back to those evil things anymore. I believe Jesus died for me. And I will not go back to evil anymore. Raise up your hand now. I'm going to pray with you. Raise up your hand. I'm going to pray with you. If you have come out or you have left all your sins behind. And you believe that Jesus is now your Savior. He died for you to take your sins away. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever, whosoever, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And you say, Lord, I believe. Now I am saved. Raise up that hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight. You have said, whosoever comes unto Christ, he will not cast away. These have come forsaking their sin, forsaking darkness, forsaking evil, forsaking their wickedness. Lord, I pray, forgive them in Jesus' name. Write their names in the book of life. Adopt every one of them into the family of God. The family of the King. So they are now children of the King. And I pray, Lord, new life will come to them. Peace of mind will come to them. And the grace to go and sin no more. Give unto everyone in Jesus' name. Confirm each in their hearts. Let us feel their weakness with their hearts. That they are now children of God. And as they go, they go in your victory. Righteousness. And you help them to be overcomers. A new life in them. And they will continue with Christ. In the Bible, believing church. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name I pray. Give me another good agege. Amen. Praise the Lord. What a great day. A great day for you. A great day of power. A great day of miracle. A great day of signs and wonders. Can I see somebody that is going to receive a miracle? It's coming your way. You will carry miracle home. Your wife will see a miracle on you. Your husband will see the miracle on you. Your parents will see the miracle on you. They say, watch, what a wonder. Wonder, wonder, wonder. Wonder of the king. Coming in your life. With this connection going to come upon your life. Your blind eyes will open. Those lame legs will receive strength. Immediately. Straight away. Suddenly right now. When you hear the name of Jesus. Power will come upon your life. Are you ready? I said are you ready? Why don't you rise up? You raise up one hand. You lay the other hand on yourself. And when you hear the name of Jesus. The king has broken the yoke. The king has removed the mountain. And then when you hear the final amen. You check up yourself. It is done. I said it is done. Get ready, it's coming. Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for our King. The King of glory. The King of power. The King of all the earth. The King of righteousness. And is the King of peace. The King of the saints. The King with a great inheritance. With a great name. A great power. A great authority. I send that power upon your people right now. And I command those mountains, come out in Jesus' name. 
that spirit of insanity and madness. I command that evil spirit come out in Jesus name. That epilepsy I command you come out in Jesus name. That swelling in your body that hunchback elephantiasis tumor in your belly fibroid in your belly goit on your neck I command that thing come out in Jesus name I pray for those who have cancer you are healed right now cancer jumps I command you die up in Jesus name I pray for that person with ulcer be healed in Jesus name and that asthma I command you be healed in Jesus name issue of blood dry up in Jesus name that pile be healed in Jesus name leprosy and skin disease I command you be healed in Jesus name HIV AIDS I command you be healed in Jesus name Lord I pray for those who have arthritis that stiffness in your joint elbow or in your shoulder in your knees or your ankle or in your waist I command that arthritis come out in Jesus name that short leg I command the short leg to grow out in Jesus name Short hand, go out in Jesus' name. With that hand, with that leg, receive strength now. Come alive in Jesus' name. And those who are paralyzed in any way, that stroke in your body, I command strength will come to you. Power will come to you. The power of the King graces you up now. Rise up in Jesus' name. Those deaf ears, I command you to be open. Deaf ears, be open. And begin to hear in Jesus' name. Dumb tongues, be loose right now. And begin to speak out. Speak out. Speak out. In Jesus' name. Those blind eyes, I command you to be open. Receive your sight. Deep eyes, receive your sight. Cataract, get out. Glaucoma, get out. Deepness of sight, get out. Open those eyes and see Jesus' name. Lord, any miracle your people need, touch them with power. Sweep away all the works of the devil. Break every chain. Destroy every yoke. Set your people free. Confirm it, O oh Lord. To my right, confirm it. To my left, confirm it. Far at the back, confirm it. There in the middle, confirm it. Over here in the front, confirm it. And everywhere you are hearing the sound of my voice. The miracle is confirmed in Jesus' name. The king has manifested his power. You are healed. You are delivered. You are free. You, you do what you are not able to do before. Lord, confirm it in every life. Thank you because I know it's done. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord, it's happened. Praise the Lord, it's done. Praise the Lord, it's done. If you're on the wheelchair, rise up, you can walk. If you're on line on the mat, rise up, you can walk. If you're in a stretcher, rise up, you can walk. If you were weak, because now there is strength. If you were blind before, open your eyes. Now you can see. If there was any swelling there, it's gone. And as you see what has happened, then you shout, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're going to rejoice with you. We're going to rejoice with you. It has happened. Wonderful. There's a confirmation there.